pass a constitution immediately, a request from the Askiri chapter. Those who voted in favour of the 20th Amendment to be expelled from the SJB parliamentary group. Decision reached to take disciplinary action against the eight MPs. Why did the MP vote in favour of the 20th Amendment to the Constitution? Antonio, Rome, Caesar, Marapu, Elari. Antonio, Dunne, Uttare, Thamai. Mama, Caesar, Ta, Adare. Namut, Mama, Rome, Ta, Eta, Vedi, Adare. Anne, Tanadi, Mama, Mage, Rata, Ta, Adare. An increase in the spread of COVID-19 numerically and geographically warns the health authorities. AG directs acting IGB to record a statement from the victim of the Arantalawa Bikku massacre in 1987 and commence criminal investigations. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on TV1. On to your lead story now. A vote was held in Parliament today after diverse views were expressed on appointing the Chair of the Committee on Public Finance. During today's sittings, the Samogi Jana Balabege pointed out that the post of chairperson should be held by an opposition member as per the standing orders of parliament. However, the government brought forward a proposal to allow the committee members to elect their leader regardless of the standing orders. <laughs> The opposition nominated my name for this position. This is the only committee that can be chaired by the opposition. I wish to ask Minister Dinesh Kunawaldana to grant that position to me. Don't act in this manner. What sort of democracy is this? Give us our right in the committee. During the time of the previous parliament, the president, the prime minister, opposition leader and the chief opposition whip acted as one group. They did not give us due recognition as the opposition, although we had a majority of members. Therefore, grant this opportunity to the faction that has the majority. When a select committee is appointed, anyone can be appointed as its leader just like other committees. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? The owner of your party has voted in our favour. You must be ashamed of that. Go home before you are chased out. He is a good person. However, he is speaking without having any knowledge about that matter. The committee met under your chairmanship. The opposition was allowed to chair the COPE and COPA committees previously. This time, nothing has been granted to us. Allow us to hold the position of chairperson in the finance committee. That was a tradition. Therefore, please grant it to us. At a media briefing today, registrar of the Askiri chapter of the Siam set, Venerable Madhagama Dhammananda Thero said, the process of implementing a new constitution should be expedited. We look forward to the implementation of a new constitution as soon as possible. The new constitution should address all the concerns that were highlighted by the Mahasangaratna and the general public. The Mahasangha of this country worked hard to ensure the present government was elected to power. We urge the government to listen to us and to draft and implement a new constitution as soon as possible. The general public will point fingers at us in the future. If the government that was appointed under the guidance of the big coups does not act in the proper manner, we urge the government to expedite the implementation of a new constitution. <laughs> The 20th Amendment to the Constitution was passed in Parliament yesterday. During today's parliamentary sittings, various remarks are made on the votes cast by certain opposition MPs in favour of the amendment. 156 votes were cast in favour of the 20th Amendment to the Constitution. 65 votes were cast against it during yesterday's parliamentary session. The provisions that would allow dual citizens to hold public office 
was passed following a vote during the committee stage. 157 votes were cast in favour, 64 against. A group of opposition parliamentarians voted in favour of the 20th Amendment yesterday. Deputy Secretary of the Samagi Janabalavegi, Diana Gamage, voted in favour of the 20th Amendment. Parliamentarian Ishak Rahuman, a member of the All Ceylon People's Congress, who was elected from the Anwadhapura district contesting under the Samagi Janabalavegia, and parliamentarian Aravind Kumar, a member of the Tamil Progressive Alliance, who was elected from the Badula district, also contesting under the Samagi Janabalavegia, voted in favour of the amendment. Parliamentarian Nasir Ahmed, who was elected from Batiklo by the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, also voted in favour of the 20th Amendment yesterday. Parliamentarian M.S. Taufik, who contested from the Trincomalee electorate, Faisal Kwazim, and H.M.M. Harris, who contested from the Digamadulla electorate under the Samagijana Balavegia representing the Muslim Congress, also voted in favour of the amendment. M.P. Ali Sabri Rahim, who was elected from the Putlam district after contesting under the United Muslim Alliance formed by Rashad Badiruddin and Rauf Hakim, supported the 20th Amendment to the Constitution yesterday. Parliamentarian Musharraf Mudanabin, who was elected from the Digamadulla electorate under Rishad Badiruddin's All Ceylon People's Congress Party, voted against the 20th Amendment, but voted in favour of the clause on dual citizenship. Except for the leader of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, Rauf Hakim, all four other parliamentarians from the party voted in favour of the 20th Amendment. The chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Maitri Palasiri Sena, was absent at the parliamentary sessions yesterday. Antonio Rome Caesar Marapu Elave. Eda Antonio. When Antonio killed Caesar in Rome, Antonio brought the knife and told the people of Rome that he killed Caesar. Antonio was Caesar's best friend. The people of Rome were furious at Antonio for killing Caesar. But then Antonio explained that although he loved Caesar, he loved Rome even more. I love my country more than anything. We spent billions of public funds to elect a president. The president was elected with 6.9 million votes. He obtained a two-third majority in parliament. This mandate was given to him by the people. He has been thrown into the river with his hands tied and now he is struggling to swim. What's the point of having a presidential election? Why are we wasting public funds? This country needs a proper leader, not a puppet. It was because of good leadership that we won the three-decade war. The current president is unable to carry out his duties properly. He is a horse who is compelled to work with a group of mules. How can he work with so many mules around him? We are yet to identify those responsible for the death of more than 258 people who lost their lives in the April attacks. This has become a joke to all of y'all. We cannot continue this way. We need to start building this country. To do that, we have to get rid of such ill thoughts. My decision was not based on any individual. Even if Sajid Premadasa had asked me to support the amendment, based on my conscience, I would have voted in favour of it. If we are to have a puppet as a president, let's all change the constitution to remove this position and let the Prime Minister and Parliament govern the country instead. That way we can save a lot of money. I will probably have to face disciplinary inquiries after this, but at least I can sleep peacefully at night because my intentions are pure. I just want to support the president to develop this country. Meanwhile, a video clip and photographs of Samagi Janabalavege MP Tushara Indunil offering a 20 rupee note to MP Nazir Ahmed, who voted in favor of the 20th Amendment yesterday, is now being shared widely across social media platforms. The system of executive presidency that was implemented from 1978 to 2015 did not pose any hindrance to the state administration. However, the 19th Amendment destroyed many things during the period between 2015 and 2020. <laughs> All Ceylon Maka Congress MP Musharraf Mutunabin, who voted against the 20th Amendment to the Constitution, but voted in favour of the clause on dual citizenship when a division was taken during the committee stage debates, 
explained the reasons behind his decision. The 20th Amendment to the Constitution creates a way for one person to obtain executive powers. There are a number of critical points. There are attempts made by them to bring in the former Minister of Economic Development, Basil Rajapaksa, to Parliament. However, Vimal Virawansa and Udaya Gamman Pillar from the same faction opposed it. That is because if Basil Rajapaksa returns, they will lose their power. There is a political view that Basil Rajapaksa will capture power if he returns. The minority communities closely worked with the Rajapaksa government. Basil Rajapaksa is someone who reconciles with everyone from the Rajapaksa family. So I thought that there will not be any harm if Basil Rajapaksa enters Parliament. That is why I made a personal decision. When the opposition demanded a separate vote for the clause on dual citizenship, certain members of the ruling party attempted to defeat it, thinking it will create issues for them. So I made a decision considering the safety of the minorities. Meanwhile, the parliamentary group of the Samagi Janabalavegia convened a meeting at the parliamentary complex this afternoon. According to our correspondent, Rishad Badiuddin, Ralph Hakim and Manu Ganeshan and leaders of the affiliated parties participated in the meeting. The parliamentary group has decided to take legal action against the eight members of the party who supported in favour of the 20th Amendment to the Constitution yesterday. <laughs> Four important decisions were made today. First of all, we decided to remove the party members who supported the dictatorial 20th Amendment, the treacherous provisions on dual citizenship and those who went against the party decision in Parliament. Secondly, we are going to inform the Speaker in writing to remove these members who went against the party decision from the seats allocated to the Samagi Janabalavegia and to allocate them some other seats in Parliament. We will also take disciplinary action against the members who went against the party decision in Parliament. We also decided to strengthen our activities at grassroots levels after normalcy is restored in the country by bringing the situation surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic under control. A discussion was held between parliamentarians of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress at the parliamentary complex today. The meeting that was chaired by party leader Rauf Hakim had been attended by all parliamentarians representing the party. Parliament Urpunarkal, Talevurudea, Sri Congress Talevurudea, Valihartel in Adipadail. The Sri Lanka Muslim Congress had decided that all its parliamentarians should be of the same stance. That is what we expected. However, we were surprised at the series of incidents that unfolded yesterday. How can we face the Muslim community now? How can we face the Muslims in the East? What can we say to the Muslims in the Ampara district? The party's central committee must decide on this matter. I feel that they acted in a contrary manner to the party's decision. The people of this country saw that the amendment was passed with a two-thirds majority using the votes of the parliamentarians in Rishad's and Hakim's parties. They did not have a two-thirds majority. They only have 148 seats. The government would have lost the vote if they had faced it with that number. Eight parliamentarians who contested under the symbol of the telephone voted in favour of the 20th Amendment. Ultimately, the Rajapaksa succeeded with the assistance of the MPs in Sajid's, Hakim's and Rishad's parties. The patriotic feeling that they expressed while opposing the provisions on dual citizenship vanished at that time. The party was sold to Sajith and the parliamentary seat to the Rajapaksas. This is what is taking place in parliament. Their support to the government or the opposition depends on the bid they receive. It is not a decision made on a policy basis. <laughs> No, we did not pledge to form a Sinhali state. Our justice minister is a Muslim. Whether a person is a Buddhist, Muslim, Berger or Tamil is irrelevant for our cabinet. We said that we would form a cabinet that is represented by all faiths. Yesterday, a group of parliamentarians from the Samagi Janabalavegia voted in favour of the government by accepting Gautabe Rajpaksa's policies. However, we need 150 seats in our camp regardless of whether they support us or not. Therefore, we invite everyone to join us to implement our policy. Uh, I think 
We can't offer them positions simply because they joined us recently. There is no need to do that. They have not joined us to implement the country's policy because they were promised ministerial portfolios or other privileges. Meanwhile, a special meeting was held at the SLFP headquarters this evening to discuss party reforms. The meeting was chaired by SLFP chairman Maitri Pala Sirisena. The meeting was attended by party MPs, district leaders and organizers. Thirteen MPs from the SLFP voted in favor of the amendment yesterday. Maitri Pala Sirisena is the former president. He is the first president in history who helped draft a constitutional amendment that weakened the powers of his own position. Nana Vikrama Singha, in a devious manner, transferred all those powers to himself. That is what led to the crisis. In my view, it is not right for Maitri Pala Sirisena, who once supported the decision to weaken the powers of the president to be present in parliament to support a decision that would increase and further strengthen the powers of his successor. That is why the former president had verbally informed the president and prime minister a few days ago about his position in this regard. <laughs> A tense debate arose between Minister Vimal Virawansa and parliamentarian Ranjan Ramanayaka in parliament yesterday. The leaked tapes revealed telephone conversations with judges on the court ruling about Duminda Silva's case. He was insisting that Duminda Silva must be punished. The judge then asked for a promotion and he promised to get it done by meeting the president. That is the sort of independent judiciary that they had. Only a few conversations were leaked. We don't know the other area on which they exerted their influence. I am not trying to criticize the verdict. But Duminda Silva was shot first. His security officer then fired gunshots at Bharata Lakshman Premachandra, who died afterwards. Ultimately, the security officer was acquitted, while Duminda Silva, who first suffered injuries, was sentenced to death based on a special request of Ranjan Ramanayaka. You say I interfered into the outcome of the verdicts that were issued by a five-member and a three-member judge bench that examined B reports and evidence for two years. Now it seems that Ranjan Ramanayaka is similar to the Chief Justice. I didn't know that I was such a powerful figure. I don't want to bring out personal matters at this forum. However, his wife, Sashi Virawansa, has spoken to me over the phone. Let me table the recordings of these conversations in Parliament. The wives of several parliamentarians have called me asking for favours. It may be because they trust me as a genuine and straightforward politician. Ajit Rohana had said that Arumadura Duminda Silva had obtained money from Vele Sudha at the Kingsbury Hotel. Despite knowing these matters, they are saying that Duminda Silva is innocent and that he was the one who was injured first. I wish to tell the people that I have recordings of conversations with several individuals. This includes the former president, former justice ministers, judges and their wives as well. This House did not permit me to table them in Parliament. I have tabled the recordings of seven conversations in Parliament. However, this House did not permit me to reveal those seven conversations as well. That is because it contains shady dealings involving them. Padmini Ranavaka Gunatilaka, who spoke to me, knew that Sarat Ambe Pitya was killed by a drug drugateer known as Potanaufer opposite his residence. That is why she asked me to speak to the President, Pooch Jasundara, and the Prime Minister to provide protection for her son who was sitting for the O-level examination at Royal College. Is that wrong? I protected judges. This is a telephone conversation. Listen to this. A three-member judge bench heard the case. The chairman of the judge bench issued an order to acquit Duminda Silva. Therefore, you intervene into the judiciary of this country to influence the verdict. Didn't you speak to Shani Abe Sekara or Nishanta? Didn't you exert your influence over these cases? Shani told you that everything has been sorted and even promised to wash the pots and pans at your home. <laughs> His wife has spoken to me. If no one is afraid, let us reveal those conversations. Why are you afraid of that? Don't be afraid of these recordings. We have never spoken to any judge. Is it correct for a parliamentarian to interfere with the judiciary? Is it correct to interfere with the judiciary to obtain an order in one's favour? What did Shani say? 
He said everything has been sorted out and asked him to remain silent. He made the president speak to the judge about her promotion as well. The verdict was assured by the time I made the phone call. He doesn't know that. Another 609 individuals tested positive for COVID-19 today. Acting Deputy Director General of Health Services, Dr. Hemanta Herat said 496 were identified from the Paliogoda fish market. Five COVID-19 cases were identified from the Gulf Fisheries Harbour, 20 from the Beruwala Fisheries Harbour. 48 COVID-19 cases were identified from quarantine centres and 40 were close contacts. Kiat Makawa Saha, Bugolia Vashing, Roginge Patirime, Vadivi Mak Apitapenino. We have observed that the spread of COVID 19 has increased globally. The current situation in the country is not something that we cannot bring under control. However, people must realize that this is a serious situation. When we examine the rate at which the virus is spreading, we can predict that the situation will go beyond our control if the required support is not received from the public. It is important to avoid all forms of unnecessary travel at this time. The misconduct of a few individuals is enough to make things worse for us. The youth who are traveling while ignoring travel restrictions are likely to be asymptomatic even if they contract the virus. They may not show symptoms of the disease. However, if they go home as infected patients, there is a chance it can be transmitted to their family members who belong to high-risk groups. They are exposing them to risk as well. Steps were taken to close the Beruwala Fisheries Harbour today after 20 fishermen tested positive for COVID-19. This was confirmed after the results of the PCR test that were carried out on more than 100 individuals at the harbour were released last evening. <laughs> Since 20% of the results were positive, we identified this area as a high-risk zone. We predict that we will identify a higher number of COVID-19 cases than anticipated from this area. The fishermen who tested positive for the virus are residents of Magana, Munhena, Berwala, Nalalahena, Maradana and Murgalla. Acting Director General of the Fisheries Department, Susanta Kahawatta, said that nearly 120,000 kilograms of fish had been stocked for sale at the Beruwala Fisheries Harbour today. Kalutura District Secretary Janaka Kumara said 750 people attached to the Beruwala Fisheries Harbour were directed to PCR tests today. Authorities also closed the Beruwala Pradeshia Sabah building complex due to the operation of fish market within the building. The situation at the Gulf Fisheries Harbour. Outsiders were restricted from entering the Gulf Fisheries Harbour after five fishermen tested positive for COVID-19. The Gulf Main Post Office was also closed this afternoon after a COVID-19 case was identified at the premises. Meanwhile, 15 locals of Katwila, Ahungala, who tested positive for the virus, were admitted to the hospital. <laughs> Surgeon infected with COVID-19. The only surgeon attached to the Rikiligaskanda district base hospital has been diagnosed with COVID-19. The surgeon, who is a resident of Kalania, had visited the Paliaguda fish market last Saturday. Our correspondent said the admission of patients to the Rikiligaskanda district base hospital has been restricted after the COVID-19 case was identified. The COVID-19 patient who escaped from the Koskama Hospital was located by Sri Lanka police this afternoon. The patient was admitted at around 1.40 this morning. He was transferred from the National Hospital. It was in the morning that we learned he was not in the ward. That person is reported to be a drug addict. Police spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohana speaking to News First said the individual was located from the Sahaspura high-rise low-income housing project in Borala. He said that the COVID-19 patient was directed back to quarantine as per the health regulations. After completing treatment, legal action will be instituted against the said individual as per the provisions of the Quarantine and Prevention of Diseases Ordinance. Various views were expressed in Parliament over the current situation surrounding COVID-19 in the country.
COVID. The second wave of COVID-19 seems to be severe than the first wave. This has created fear among the public over the pandemic. What is the current situation of the virus? Has the transmission of COVID-19 reached the community stage or not? I believe you would apprise the House on the current situation surrounding COVID-19 in the country. Following the outbreak of this virus, some entities were granted ethanol licenses to manufacture sanitizers. This situation has become a challenge for us now. There are several problems regarding this. A racket is taking place over the problems surrounding Sri Lankan expatriates. The package granted to those who were repatriated to the country from Oman costs nearly 380,000 rupees. A few companies are involved in rackets by making use of this situation. Three-wheel drivers do not have sufficient hires. Buses do not have many passengers. Workstations do not have equipment. Laborers don't have jobs. People don't have the 5,000 rupee allowance as well. Several groups in the society have been affected due to this situation. Implement a mechanism to uplift the lives of these people. <laughs> When we asked to distribute face masks free of charge as they are essential, you said they are not required at all. However, today the people have been warned against leaving their homes without a mask. Recently, I questioned you on the community spread of the virus. You denied that the virus has reached the community transmission stage. You do not accept that now as well. Take a look at what Ubal Rohana from the Public Health Inspectors Union has said. He has said that there are difficulties in identifying the origin of the virus in clusters and the community as well. That is a dangerous situation. We have received information that individuals who displayed symptoms of the virus were identified near the Paliagoda fish market even before the branding factory cluster had emerged. PHI officers have come across a drug addict in the area who had been infected with COVID-19. Another cluster had emerged during a religious event in Kuliapitiya following the Brandix cluster. That is yet to be officially identified. I request you to look into these matters. Sri Lanka. Only 293 patients have been identified among every million people in Sri Lanka's population. Accordingly, the countries that have handled this situation in a much better manner include China, Thailand, Taiwan, Cambodia, Vietnam and Laos. The highest number of deaths have been reported from Peru. 1,026 people have died among every million of their population. In Sri Lanka, the percentage stands at 0.7% per million. I wish to inform this house that we will gradually develop our system to handle this situation even if it exists for two years. We took steps to bring the COVID-19 virus under control. It affected all sectors in the country. However, Sri Lanka is in a much better position on all fronts when compared to other countries. Patients may be detected from various parts of the country. A few individuals may be infected in various districts. However, that situation has not aggravated. As the government, we have taken all possible steps to curb the spread of the virus. All of us are aware that there is a second wave or perhaps a third wave, we don't know, and the community spread. It can be denied, uh, we can uh, continue to live in denial, but from what's happening around us, we have every reason to believe that the situation is rather grim. And it's unfortunate that the members from the government ranks are turning this into an occasion in which they can score brownie points by congratulating His Excellency the President, by congratulating the fair Minister of Health who is uh, in the chamber uh, as to how well uh, they have performed. The question is not how well you have performed, the question is that there is an issue, a serious issue to be addressed. And I have made a suggestion, I have made this quite some time ago, during the months of uh, March, April, May, that there was legislation necessary to counter this situation. We know that the quarantine ordinance and the uh, contagious diseases ordinance are both over 100 years old. We even asked that parliament reconvene during the time it was dissolved in order to make new laws for this. Last week I have handed over to the Secretary General a draft legislation. The government can have a look at it. it you can make it your own law, make changes, but it's important that you do that because we really do not have even laws to impose curfew properly. The, yes, Minister. And I have gazetted all uh, no, relevant uh, legal... The, that uh, is the view that you have taken, but the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka on a representation made by me has written to the government saying that this is not being done lawfully.
The Attorney General has directed the acting IGP to record a statement from the victim of the LTTE attacks on Buddhist monks in June 1987. The incident is commonly known as the Arantalava massacre. The coordinating officer to the Attorney General, State Counsel Nishara Jayaratna, told News First that the Criminal Investigation Department has been instructed to launch a criminal investigation into the incident as well. The Criminal Investigation Department has been instructed to submit a progress report on the investigations within two weeks. Sri Lanka's Geopolitics Members of U.S. State Secretary Mike Pompeo's staff have arrived in Sri Lanka to prepare for his visit. In a statement, the U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka said that all aspects of their arrival and stay have been organized in close coordination with the government of Sri Lanka. A senior State Department official said the United States is urging the country to make difficult but necessary choices to secure its economic independence instead of choosing opaque practices. According to Reuters, in a telephonic briefing with reporters, U.S. officials warned the Sri Lankan government about who they team up with for their economic partnership. Dean Thompson, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary at State Department's Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs, has said, quote, We encourage Sri Lanka to review the options we offer for transparent and sustainable economic development in contrast to discriminatory and opaque practices, end quote. I wish to put forward a proposal to the President, Prime Minister and Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva is facing a travel ban. I know that restrictions have been imposed on foreign travel due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, I request you hold talks with the U.S. State Secretary Pompeo to lift the travel ban on Shavendra Silva. We raised this matter within the first 24 hours after the travel ban was imposed. On behalf of Sri Lanka, the foreign ministry held talks with the relevant officials and informed them that this decision was unfair. We have conveyed this stance to the U.S. Department of State as well. Do not forget how the previous government went to Geneva and co-sponsored a resolution that betrayed our soldiers. The reason why I made this proposal is that there is no need to address letters. You will meet him in person in the near future. Obtain a statement from him on lifting the travel ban before he leaves the country. The suggestion made by the opposition leader is good. If such remarks were made under your government when the foreign minister at that time betrayed the country by punishing soldiers, we would not have experienced this situation. It was I, Sajid Premadasa, who backed the moves to appoint Shavendra Silva as army commander. You can ask that from the former president Maitripala Sirisena and Shavendra Silva as well. Right, right, okay. And that's a wrap of this edition of Primetime News for tonight. For the news, we stay my Mazrasan with a sign language interpreter, Tharaka Gabriel. Take very good care of yourself. Thank you for joining us. Good night.